Hello and welcome to episode one of the Inexperienced Podcast with me, Connor Gilmore. This is a podcast where we will be talking all about starting university as well as our hopes and our dreams for the future. So, without further ado, let's welcome our first guest, Charlotte Dunn. Charlotte, hello and welcome to the Inexperienced Podcast. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Good. You're looking a little bit nervous. Because I am. Yeah, you don't really know what's going to happen, do you, yet? <laughs> don't worry, though. Um, we're hopefully going to teach you how to be a little bit less inexperienced when it comes to going to uni, if you excuse the double negative. And, um, yeah, we're just going to have a nice little chat about your your worries, your hopes and your dreams um, about the year ahead. So, are you ready? I am indeed. You, you look very ready. I am ready. But before we do start the podcast, we do have to ask you a very, very important question, okay? Okay. Some say that it is the most important question to ask an undergraduate applicant, all right? All right. Can you guess what the question is? Absolutely not. No, well, I'll tell you, it is... Name your poison. What is your drink of choice, Charlotte? Malibu Ooh. and Cherry Aid. Ooh, where'd you first try that? Sounds like an interesting choice. Yeah, I was at a party. Ooh. Mm. Maddie. Oh, Maddie's party. Well, it wasn't Maddie's oh, party. Oh, a different party. Yeah, but I was drinking it at Maddie's party. You, you, you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you don't have to remind me. Um, you know what? I still don't remember that taxi ride home. <laughs> I just well, remember waking up and then being like, oh, I'm at my front door. We don't talk about that anymore. But um, so Malibu and Cherry Aid, was it? Yep. Yeah, sounds nice. But for now, you've got a coffee. I have. What type of coffee have you got? Just a plain black one. Just a plain black one. Lovely. And what number coffee is this of the day? Five. Number five. And what time is it? 11? No, 12. Quarter past 12 and you've had five coffees. Do you think there might be a little bit of an addiction there or... Just, just a tiny just, bit. Just a little bit. Uh, Fair enough. We'll, we'll move on before we start concerning our listeners. And um, I want you to tell me what you've just finished studying at sixth form. Well... Oh, Do you so want me to start with how I sounds, set out? Sounds like um, we're about to start story time with Charlotte, so uh, whenever you're ready. Do you want me to start from what I intended to do? At okay, the yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Start right from the beginning. Well, I set out and I sat down in my sixth form interview to do... Way set, back when? Way back when, in 2017. It was, was it? Yeah, it will have been summer, summer 2017, back in yeah. the day. And I set out, and I was like, right, this is what I'm going to do. And I said, sociology. Okay. Psychology. Interesting. Health and social. And biology. Oh. So a bit, oh. <laughs> a bit of a mix, right? A and what, what did you finish with? Health and social and psychology. So you, you, you dropped biology and what was the other one? Sociology. Sociology. What What were the reasons behind that? I didn't even start sociology. Okay. <laughs> I was like enough. having like nightmares before because I did it at GCSE. And biology you finished in year 13, right? Yeah. And we don't talk about that either, no. do we? <laughs> Apparently I was too good to do biology. Well, that that is what the school said. I, I remember them saying that to you. Um, I do actually. So do you... Do you think, though, that not doing four subjects and instead doing two has aided your like overall grades at the end? I'd like to think so. Yeah, because I, I, I was the same, in, in a sense. I started doing four, and then I dropped down to three, and I thought that doing, doing three would be a lot more handy because you'd have more mm. time to put into your three subjects. And at the end of the day, you want a couple of strong grades more than you want three or four we NAF don't. grades. So... You know, at the end of the day, you've probably come out better overall. But we'll see on on results day. So that's now. But in September, what subject are you going on to study? Psychology. Psychology. And has that been been your favourite from sixth form then? I assume it is since it's what you want to do. Yes. Yeah. And what, what, what sort of things do you do in psychology? Because I, I've, I've never studied it. I know absolutely nothing. So do you want to give us like a little bit of an overview of to what psychology is? It's the study of the human mind. 
Oh, sounds interesting. Well, and behaviour. So it's so it's not like hypnotising people and all that. Not quite. It's not quite your average lay on the couch and speak to your psychologist kind of thing. <laughs> do you think that might be something you might end up doing or is it something Depends. else that you want to do as a career? Do you mean me being the person on the couch well, or the one you talk to? <laughs> you, you, you never know. After you after know. the time we both had at sixth form, I think we could both do with a lie down and a chat to someone. Um. <laughs> So it's psychology, and where are you planning on studying? Sheffield Holland. Sheffield, and you've got an unconditional, is that right? That is correct. Lovely, and it was was Sheffield your top choice, or did you choose it because it was unconditional? No, actually. Um, that was always one of my top choices, and nice. I did like the look of York St. John's, but after I got unconditional for them both. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, not like blowing my own trumpet or anything. But yeah, I got an unconditional for both. And then I was like, I turned down York St. John's mainly because it was too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I know, York. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we will speak about York um, with Chelsea in one of the other podcasts. Oh. And um, we are going to talk about um, how expensive York can be. In that, because it, it, it's a lovely city. Oh, yeah, it's but, very big. Um, there's a lot of students there, and it is very expensive because it is like, well, it's the capital of Yorkshire, isn't it, really? You could say that, yeah. So they, I think they take advantage, but they do a, a, a Yorkshire rap fair. Have you seen what, what it is? It's somewhere near the castle walls, it's like a cafe slash restaurant, and they do a Yorkshire rap, which is like. It's basically a carvery meal. In a Yorkshire pudding? In a Yorkshire pudding. Ah. And it, it's like, that's the future of cuisine, especially Yorkshire cuisine. Do you think it is? I think I think that's where what we're going to all end up eating in future. Just mm. full meals wrapped in Yorkshire puddings. With a cup of tea. What's this? What's, yeah, with a cup of of course. Or a coffee, if it's your <laughs> case. Your nice. 60th cup of the day. But um, what, what, what do you think is the strangest meal you can put inside a Yorkshire pudding then it'd probably be like oh. Oh. I don't know it'd probably like prawn, baked beans baked be- oh yeah no <laughs> or like prawn cocktail inside oh, a yeah. rat could you imagine co- oh. Oh. <laughs> That's mustard and like, and like if, if, if you were going to have a meal that was wrapped in a wrap it'd say if it were three courses would it be one really long Yorkshire pudding with like three different sections or three different Yorkshire puddings. Surely it'd be three different Yorkshire puddings. I know, but there's something qu- quite interesting to me about one massive, massive Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, but what <laughs> like if you've got like... three different courses wrapped into. What if you start a soup though? How are you going to put that in a Yorkshire pudding? In a wrap. I I think we should come to to tackle that issue when it happens rather than Unless talk you about it now. A proper Yorkshire pudding. I mean, and Paul it depends how in. it depends how like hard it is, because if if your Yorkshire pudding is like a pancake, it's going to soak through. But if it's crispy, mm. Mm, it depends. It's it? it's going to hold it because it'll be like a little bowl. It'll be like a tea that's tea. what that's what you're supposed to do when you're at, when you're at Toby Carvery, fill your Yorkshire pudding up with peas, and then make them swim in gravy. What if you don't like peas? Well, that's not good enough then, is it? Well, that means I'm not good enough. See you later. <laughs> you don't like peas? No. I mean, there's a, there's a, I mean, yeah. Let's let's not get into food argument because I'm no. sure I'm gonna have enough uh, <laughs> conversations like that when we actually both get to uni. Let's oh, yes. not, um, let's say, let's not get started on the scone scone situation. It's a scone. Because uh, yeah, no comment. Uh, <laughs> it's a scone. So um, anyway, you say that you want to go to Sheffield, right? Right. So I've actually done some very, very quick research and I've found out some facts about Sheffield, oh. which I want to share with you. But first of all, do you know any facts about Sheffield? It's got a flares. It's got a flares. A lot of places have a flares, though. Anything exciting about Sheffield? It's got a flares. Well, I mean, <laughs> that is exciting, but is that is that all you can think of? And it has got Ikea. Wall. Oh yeah, it's got a new IKEA. It has. That's always handy when you are you, go, are you staying in halls or are yes. you going to commute halls? Yes. Nice. So you're going to have a nice IKEA trip, maybe. 
Fingers crossed. You see, that's what I look look forward to for that first week of uni. Like, I know that my, like my room's furnished and stuff. Yeah. But nice. I already know that there's space for one little cabinet slash chest of drawers. Mm. So for I'm all like, clothes. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a, probably a day in IKEA choosing one tiny like cabinet thing because like yeah, but IKEA is IKEA is a day out. Oh yeah. Definitely. 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 There's, there's like, there's so much to do in IKEA, and it sounds really boring to anyone who's not ever been in an IKEA. But as soon as you go there, you realise that that's like furniture heaven. You just right? want to move out every time you go to IKEA. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I sit there and I'm like, Dad, I'm, I want that sofa. I want that kitchen. Yeah, and but like I want things, that bed. things seem so cheap in IKEA as well compared to. Oh yeah. The the normal. Um, furniture shops. Oak Furniture Land. Yeah. Not to name any. Oh, on wood. Oh, yes, you are on a knock. Oh, on wood. <laughs> anyway, um, back to Sheffield. So, okay. yeah, there's a, there's an Ikea there, and there's Meadow Hall, and there's a Flares. There are three facts, but um, it also has a national park in the city. Does it? It does. It has the Peak District National Park, one of the most beautiful oh. national parks in in the world i'd say i mean i mean we're a bit biased because we're from yorkshire yeah, sure. but like walking around the peach street for me is very fun and you know i did it for my for my dv for my bronze and my gold and i absolutely love it so like um even though i'm going near manchester and they've got obviously the the peaks around manchester but like yeah. you can't you can't beat the uh yorkshire the yorkshire peak district can you absolutely not Sheffield also is host to the world's oldest football club. Can you guess which one it is? This could be really embarrassing. Is it Sheffield United? It's not. Sheffield Wednesday? It's not. What? There's another club there called Sheffield FC and it was founded in 1857 by members of a cricket club based in Sheffield. They adopted the FA rules in 1878, and now they play in the Northern Premier League. But it's football, not cricket. Yeah, I know. I was just reading that <laughs> and thinking, hmm, that's strange. Yeah, a football club founded by members of a cricket club based in Sheffield, and apparently it's the world o- world's oldest football club. But bit of a, an interesting fact... Um, also, it hosts the world's oldest football ground, which I'm just reading. I assume, yep, yeah, it's for the same team, Sheffield FC. It also hosts Sheffield Hallam FC, so it must be near the uni. It must be. So that's that's your first job when you go to Sheffield is find out a bit Brandy. more about the football club and maybe take take a picture of yourself at the world's oldest football club. Oh yeah. And we can stick it on Instagram. Hashtag inexperienced podcast. Yes. Hashtag Sheffield. Yes. And Sheffield is also one of the greenest cities in the world. Apparently, mm-hmm. it is the greenest city in the UK. It's got lots of green spaces. Another very interesting fact, or at least very interesting for me, about Sheffield is that it hosts the largest theatre performing complex outside of London. And the people who have maybe seen my documentary called Connor on Theatre will perhaps recall this, but they host um, the the Crucible, where they do the snooker every year as well, the Lyceum and the Crucible Studio, all, all part of the same company. They're the biggest performing complex outside of London. There is also um, theatres like the City Hall Theatre and the Library Theatre as well, as well as a couple of others. So there's there's loads and loads of um theatre productions all the time in Sheffield. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's really your interest. No, I do like going to the theatre. But you'll you'll definitely find something that that is interesting to you. Um even if it's not all the time because there's that much on, you'll definitely find something interesting. And they do a very very good Christmas panto as well at the Lyceum. Oh I love a good panto. Oh, everyone loves a good panto. I went there maybe three years ago with my drama group and we got to meet Mr. Maker. So that was the no the highlight of my life. I am she. Oh yeah. Is that? <laughs> I, know, I'm just, I am <laughs> you, you just look so confused. Um but yeah, I got got to meet him and do you know what? I'll try and find that picture as well. And if I find it I'll post that on the Instagram as well for oh, everyone yeah. to see my drama group with Mr. Maker. Um 
Anyway, um, final bit about Sheffield is, um, is it, well, it's really a question for you. If if you've got two bits of bread, right, and 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 something in the middle of them, mm. so a, a sandwich, right? Yeah. What what would you call the two bits of bread? So so here are some options, all right? Um, I'm confused. Roll, a bun, a bap, or a cob, or something like that. Oh, you don't mean like slices of bread, do you? No, I mean like a, oh. an actual. I can't say the word because the. I want to know what you call it. I've had this argument with Millie before. Yeah, Mil- Millie Abrahams, who's hopefully yeah. going to be on the podcast as well. She loves to argue about this, but a bread cake. Would you call it a bread cake? It's bread cake, bread bun. Well, it depends if, what mood I'm in. If you call it a bread bun in Sheffield, they'll tell you to get out. Apparently, it has to be called a bread cake or a balm cake. A balm. But balm cake, yeah. You know, like, it's an insult, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, shut up your balm cake. That's um, not right, no. But yeah, bread cake or balm cake. That's what they okay. call them in Sheffield, apparently. Bread cake or bread bun. Oh, we're getting it's into like more people... food arguments, everyone. It's like calling it a cob. <laughs> a cob. Oh, no, I don't agree with cob. What's the... Scuffler, that's one. That's what my dad calls them sometimes. I mean... But a scuffler's more like a triangular-shaped bread. Yeah. I don't think this is very interesting. Should we try and move on? They're going to kick me out loads of places, and aren't they? <laughs> so, yeah, there's, as, as we've established, there's lots of stuff to do in Sheffield. Um, there's a good student life there. With, uh, is it, it's two different unis, isn't there? Sheffield, Hallam and, uni and of. uni of. And I think there's um, a couple of little educational establishments there as well that do uh, uni courses. Um, however, that's next year. What I want to talk about very briefly is a little bit more about the past now. Oh. And I'm going to link this into um, what I was doing this morning. Uh, I was at my brother's um, year four sports day. I have a good memory from right? my year four one. And just just whilst I've got the opportunity, I want to say well done to him because he came second in one of his things that were being... No, that was... He said he can't remember what he came second in because I arrived late. Said he can't remember what he came second in. So is it a lie? Well, yeah, but he got the sticker though. Oh. And he came. Well done. F- and he came fourth out of four, for the beanbag race. I and came I don't, fourth out of four. But he still got fourth. That's that's not that bad. He almost got the bronze. So yeah, as I say, whilst I've got the opportunity, well done, Finley. Woo! Well um, done, Finley. But on 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 that note. Whilst I was there, obviously I was feeling quite nostalgic and remembering my time at the same primary school, thinking back to my year four sports day when I was his age. And on my way out, I was walking past the school kitchen and I saw um, one of the cooks there, she's called Miss Fitzpatrick. And um, I remember every day at playtime, I used to go up to the kitchen window because it was on onto the playground and I used to like poke my nose through the window and ask what was for lunch, right? That that was a that was a big part of my childhood, and Asking I have and I haven't I haven't seen the woman since I was in year six, oh. right? So it was it was quite big for me to go back there today, and for her to actually still recognise me, like how many years? Nine years later? Ten years later? No, not ten. Don't say that. That's scary. Like eight, no, it'll be eight or eight. nine, eight years. Not, it's seven. Maybe we just finished year thirteen. Seven. Why am I seven. saying that? Yeah, seven. What seven. did I say? You said seven. Oh, You're no. right. Um, anyway, still remember, still recognise me seven years later, right? So, um, that for me, that person, she made quite a big impact on my childhood, and it wasn't for doing something important. It was just because, um, her being there just is something that stuck in my memory. So, what I want to ask you is, is there anyone from your childhood? It could be a teacher or like a family friend or you know just anyone you remember who's made a big impact of your childhood memory who didn't really do anything big to sort of influence you. Right, so that rules out my grandma. Yeah. She did something big. All right, you can talk about that if you like as well. She just took me on. Well, obviously my dad did as well. But yeah. Oh, bless. She I know, I know you're quite in. close to your grandma, aren't you? Yeah. So, yeah. 
so there's my grandma but an impact without doing anything yeah or like someone who you remember from your childhood who didn't really do much but still made an impact do you know do you know do you know what i'm sort yeah, of going for i know what you're going for but there's... because i think back to my time at canon popham at primary school the coffee school yeah the coffee school I, i'm surprised you didn't go there the amount of coffee you drink well, my, one of my teachers went from well, my school to your school. Oh, uh, Mrs. Navas. Oh, she's still there now, yeah. Is I she? know Miss Navas, yeah. Yeah, but she came back to us for and our her, year six her, leavers. Her daughter um, is teaching for a bit at Hall Cross as well because she was training to be a drama teacher. She came oh. to do a teacher training at Hall Cross, so she was teaching me as well. Anyway. Anyway. Anyone you can think of? There's someone I always remember from Dunsville. Right. Um, Not her. I don't know, Dunsville Dosser, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually the cook, Mrs. Brown. Oh, all right, okay. And um, what what was special about her then? Well, she was like Spanish, I think. But it's the fact that she would, if you told her it was your birthday, everybody would sing, "Happy birthday to you." Well, but so it's then, like it's like the little things then that. Yeah, or the, but then she did used to come around and like kiss you all the time. I mean, it sounds that, very... That does sound a bit weird. Maybe, maybe we should call child line on that. Oh, uh, maybe. Sounds... No, but she did have... A little bit strange. A squeaky turkey that she used to squeak. <laughs> when, like, okay. around about... To get everyone's attention. And I just always remember that. <laughs> um, yeah. Tragic, I know. Brill. So what was she called again? Miss Brown? Mrs Brown, Mrs yeah. Brown. And, and you've spoken about your grandma as well. And, yeah. I mean... Is, do you think your grandma's going to be one of the people you miss the most when you move to uni? I miss her now when she's only gone to Skegness for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so definitely, definitely. then. Definitely. Um, oh, but there's my dog. Yeah, I was I was literally just about to come on to that. You oh. you told me earlier um, that your pets or your pet is is one of the things you're going to miss the most. Indeed. Do you think you'll miss the dog the most out of everyone? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not tell them that. <laughs> they already but... know. I sat in my room and cried about it though. I'm really? not even just saying oh, that. Bless you. Not even just for the hashtag podcast. No. <laughs> well, I actually did a survey of about thirty um, other uni applicants, and I wanted to ask them what they were going to miss the most. So um, they had a, a multiple multiple answer questions, so they could pick all the answers they want, but. Um, some fun facts for you. I've just noticed your iPad's upside down. Oh, right, I'll turn it over then. Fair <laughs> enough. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> Happy now? Yeah. Right, let me start that bit again then. So, I can tell you that 48% of people said they are not looking forward to moving away from pets. So, you're almost in the majority. Almost. And 52% of people said they were not looking forward to moving away from family. So, it is extremely close. Yeah, but... It My was dog actually, is family. Well, I think I think that's why a lot of people would have ticked family as well. Yeah, but if you've seen the option for pets, I mean... Obviously well, I mean, there, they, there were a lot of people who did tick friends and family, but there was one one um, one person in it Ooh. from... There was one more person who ticked family than ticked pets. So you never know, it might be someone without pets and they just don't know what oh, it's like. Yeah. But yeah, I, I thought out. that was an interesting fact to include because um, it was it was very close. And I mean, it's very close. Well, it? how old were you when you got your dog? Um, we got him in two thousand fourteen. I was thirteen. Thirteen. So, like, you've not had him ages and ages and ages and ages. No, but we've had pets before. So. All right, it's, and well, and obviously they they have a big influence on your life. I yeah. know, like you you always talk about your dog, don't you? you I'm a bit is sad it on Oscar? That. Oscar, yeah. See, With the that's... Ear. <laughs> I remember you chatting about him all the time. So, um, yeah, your fam- family and your pets obviously are going to be something that you miss um, a lot when you go to Sheffield. However, at least you're close. I'm close. Yeah. You know, you can come back like almost every weekend if you really, really if wanted I really, to. Really, really want. I mean, you could even come back on an evening, couldn't you? And yeah. If you really, really miss your dog. So we've spoken about who you're going to miss. Mm-hmm. I also asked you about the things that you're not looking forward to. And can can you remember what, what those things were? No. Let me have a look. I've got them. What are you looking forward to the least? You said moving away from family, which we've spoken about. Yeah. Cooking. 
Yeah. Making friends. Yeah. And the last thing, what we're going to talk about now is budgeting. Oh, yes. Right? Right. Now, your whole head jumped up then in fear. Oh, yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to play a little game that goes a little bit like this. Ooh. Yes, we are going to play Bruce's Price is Right. Although we're not going to play it with Bruce because sadly he's passed away, as we know. We're going to play Connor's Price is Right, okay? Okay. And fun fact before we start, my dad was actually on the Bruce's Price is Right back in series one. No way. Yeah, and he actually won it. What? Yeah. No no joke. My dad won the Price is Right. I'll... um, can I'll, watch it? I'll I'll get it up on YouTube for you after. Thank you very much. Because uh, I know where the link is. Um, but yeah, he, he won the Price is Right. And he said Bruce was a lovely guy, but at the end, he won like a barbecue. And they'd use like prop um, baked potatoes, right, wrapped in tin foil. Oh, well, they were real, but, and, but at the end of the show, because he's won... Like, Bruce, like, lobs a potato at him. Oh, no. He's like, here, eat this. And my dad hadn't eaten all day. So he's like, oh, yes, if he's giving me a baked potato. So my dad takes a bite out of it, and he takes a bite out of a raw potato. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, he won, he won the game show, but that's what everyone remembers when he tells a story about it. But, oh, yeah, great. we're going to play Connor's Price is Right, and um, basically we're going to play higher or lower, okay? okay. Yeah. So... First of all, I want you to guess the price of something to start us off. Right. So I've done my research. I went on the Sainsbury's website the other day and got some prices of the sort of things that you'd buy at uni. Okay. I didn't know that you liked Sainsbury's though. Oh, no. Uh, not not think... a lot of people know that I work there. I never, ever mention it. I didn't think you did. You don't <laughs> even talk about it. Um, well, first of all, 80 Yorkshire tea bags. How much do you think they are? Now... Before you guess, they are slightly more expensive than other tea bags because, because they are the supreme tea bags. And Sainsbury's is a bit of a rip-off at times. Right? And Sainsbury's can be a little bit of a rip-off at times. Please don't sack me if my manager's listening. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what What do you think? I'll give you a, what should we say, 25p each way, each side okay. to guess. Can I give you a quick fun fact though? And Yes, you can. Well, I was talking to my flatmates to be. All right. And I was looking on Amazon at a bumper pack of Yorkshire tea bags. Do you know how many? Oh, how many? Six hundred. Six hundred. That must be a week's worth at least. I'd say maybe a day. <laughs> but no, six hundred or one thousand and forty. Wow! For how much? Um, thirteen pound ninety nine. Mm. I was going to buy it with my granddad. I was like, that's a waste of money. I was like, don't nice. swear at me. <laughs> anyway. But, yeah, 80 Yorkshire tea bags, how much do you think they are? £2.79. £2.79. Unfortunately, you, you are out. It's £2. Cheaper than what I expected as well. £2? £2, £2 pounds for 80 tea bags. Mind you saying that. I mean, that, that's a lot of tea for £2, if you think about it. Is it on offer, though? That no, price? that's the normal price. Really? Yeah, I remember putting it through at work. Normal price, Be- 80 tea bag for £2. But if you are fr- thrifty, you can um, you can get a lot more tea bags for cheaper, but they're not always as good because Yorkshire tea is the best, really. But you can go on Amazon and get big... As, as you say, you can go on Amazon if you're, if you're extra smart. And get more like that's that. Me. So that's the first one. 80 Yorkshire tea bags, two pounds. You've sadly got no points yet. But the next thing is something that most people will buy in a type. And you are you still a vegetarian? I am indeed. Yes. So good because I've done my research um, appropriately. So you know I know so most well. most people every week will buy some form of chicken. However, what I want you to tell me is if. 350 grams of corn chicken is a higher or lower price than 80 Yorkshire tea bags. Remember, they were two pounds. So is it is 350 grams of corn chicken pieces? Pieces, not fillets. Pieces. Right. 
Is it higher or lower than two pounds? I was in Sainsbury's the other day and I know the fillets were two pounds. And I'm thinking, I want to say higher. Are you sure? That's a deadly question. A proper deadly question. Are you going to lock, that? you need to lock it in. I'm going to lock in higher. Right, lock in higher. So for the answer, actually going to go to my brother, okay? And he's going to tell us the answer. Oh. It is. Higher. Higher. So that's one point for you, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one, potatoes. Most people are going to buy potatoes every week. And Just the cheap. Let's well, we'll we'll see. Two point five kilograms. Right. Is it higher or lower than three pounds twenty five? Lower. Lower? Are you sure? Yeah, lock that answer in. Okay. Over to my brother. The answer is Lower. Lower. Cha ching. So that's two points. So so far we've got eighty orch tea bags for two pounds. Corn chicken, three hundred and fifty grams for three twenty five, and the potatoes were. Can you guess? One pound seventy five. Close. There were two pounds. Oh, I was twenty five p lower, which is you said that I had that margin. Yes, you do. So, so well, there's no points on offer for that one, unfortunately. But you have got two points so far. Um, next up is pot noodle, and this is for four of them. Right. All right, mm. and. I don't really buy them. Well, I know, but it's like it's an easy buy for people, and a lot of students do buy um, instant stuff like that because it's easy to cook, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't really call it cooking because it's just pour, pour pouring hot water in and boiling stir. water in it. But you know, you know what I mean. So I do. the potatoes were two pounds. Are the pot noodles a higher or lower price than two pounds for a pack of four? For a pack of four. Higher. Are you sure? You're going to lock that in? Are you sure you're sure? Yes. Yes. Finley says that a four pack of pot noodles is... Higher! Higher. It's yes. a higher price. It is actually £3.20 mm. for four packs of pot noodles. So more expensive than you might think. Yeah. I, I, I thought they'd be cheaper than that. But no. Three... Three pounds twenty. Get the same as basic ones. Well, yeah, but then sometimes I lack a little bit of flavour, so you want to add something to it. Oh, just buy herbs. Oh. But then that's more money. Yeah, but how? Or I'll tell you what: last? if you budget well, you'll be able to make more, make your money go further anyway. And we're going to talk about budgeting tips in a minute. I'm not very good at that. So <laughs> we'll move on. We've had pot noodle for three pounds twenty. Right. Now we're going to ask you whether Robinsons. Apple and blackcurrant squash, just a standard size bottle, is more or less than £3.20. Is it higher or lower? Lower. Are you sure? We're talking a standard one litre bottle, aren't we? Yeah. Lower, surely. Lower. The answer is... Lower! Yes. Lower. We're on the same wavelength. Yeah, so how many points have you got now? Four? Yeah, four. Four points. They... Uh, a bottle of Robinson's one litre apple and blackcurrant squash is one pound sixty five. Mm-hmm. Although, if you again, if you get the home brand ones, yeah. they're usually about sixty to eighty p. Definitely. If that. Sometimes they're on offer as well too for like one pound. Yeah, £1. And like all the big brands are always rotating what's on offer, so it's good to keep out. Anyway, again, anyway. we'll talk about tips a little bit more later. Definitely. Anyhow, next up is a kilogram of pasta. Is it? More is it higher or lower than one pound sixty five? The these are starting to get harder now. I that, think that uh, is quite tricky. One pound sixty five, we say. Yes, and, and we're asking about a kilogram of pasta. Is that one of the massive bags? Well, it depends how massive you consider a kilogram to be. That's part of the challenge. Um. Go on, take a wild guess. I did a lot of that in my A levels, you know, just taking a lot of guess. <laughs> Eeny meeny miny mo. Let's say lower. Lower? Are you sure? No, I mean, I you don't look sure, but we'll take that anyway. Yeah. The answer is lower. Lower. What did you say? I forgot. I said lower, and then I was like, no higher. Oh. But we said we locked in lower. Yeah, we'll take. <laughs> we'll take lower. We'll take lower. First, a kilogram of pasta is a pound. Really? Yeah, pasta's really cheap. Because it's That's why a lot of a lot of students 
cook a lot of pasta. And if you buy it in bulk, like if you buy, say, five kilograms at a time, it's even cheaper. Yeah. Get, so, them, get them offers. Yeah. Well, look out. For, well, it, like, they don't even need to put it on offer because it's always cheap. Yeah. But yeah, and then like you can make you can make stuff really easily with pasta because you can just lob in Spaghetti. some like yeah, but Domeo sauce or something. All Saints Prison. Do you know what I mean? Buy a pepper for 50p and lob that in. Or That's know. expensive for one pepper. Yeah, but it, a pepper. Anyway. We'll <laughs> right. not get into the, the budgeting next, arguments. The next one, again, this is another tricky one. It's a kilogram of rice. So we said a kilogram of pasta is one pound, but... Do you think a kilogram of rice is a higher or lower price than one pound? I'd say it was higher. You think higher? I do. The answer is... Higher! Yes, the answer is higher. Um, a kilogram of rice is one pound sixty. So you've actually got... How many right? You've got none wrong yet, have you? Let's no. just go with no. No, you've got, you've got none wrong. So you've got one point, two points, three points, four points, five points, six points, okay? To make it seven points, you have to answer what I think is the hardest one, okay? No pressure. We've had a kilogram of rice for £1.60. Right. Now, I want you to guess whether 70 centilitres of pink gin is higher or lower than £1.60, okay? It's the hardest one. 75 centilitres. 70 centilitres. 70 centilitres. I think centilitres. I don't work in centilitres. CL. It's a normal oh. sized bottle of pink gin. Oh, that's got to be more. <laughs> what? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure this is a hard one? Wait. A normal yeah. sized bottle of pink gin. What, like an actual bottle of pink gin? Yeah. Or is it like same no, like a little bottle? No, an actual bottle. Higher or lower than £1.60? Higher. I've got to tell you, the answer is... Lower! No way! No, I'm only kidding, it's... Oh, higher! It's, it's higher. Can you imagine? <laughs> Alki Central! A, a, a bottle of pink gin is £15. You, usually, a bottle of spirits is usually about... £14.99, um, I had in my head for Well, yeah, it's about £15 to £20, usually, for a bottle of spirits. Excluding whiskey, because that's usually a lot more expensive. Oh, no but, yes. Way. Definitely, well, yes. But that's not a spirit, but that's like... <laughs> it's definitely yeah. higher than pound sixty, which is a kilogram of rice. So, you have got seven points. I have indeed. Out of a possible, I think it's eight. Oh. So, you've done very well. Thank you. That um, brings us to the end of that game. So, um, very well done there. You've done very well. Thank you very much. Leading on from that game, as I said before, we are going to talk a little bit more about our tips for budgeting. I know you said that's something that you're not looking forward to. So hopefully by the end of this, we'll have learned some top tips for budgeting that will help us manage our money, okay? So I know you've been thinking about this a little bit and I want you to tell, tell us what your first tip is. My first one, I've been thinking about this for a while, is to give your bank card to somebody like your grandma. Okay, you'll have to explain this a little bit more to me. Why? Because if your grandma's like mine, she'll tell you that you're spending too much money all the time on stuff you don't need. All right, okay, so have have someone who can see basically what you're spending, who oh, yes. can tell you off. So a little bit like a, a personal bank manager. I swear she thinks she's nationwide though half the time. <laughs> like, it's like, I thought you were skin. <laughs> like no, but that, that's a good idea though, because it, it means, do, do you do that now? No. No, but do you it think would, you definitely will? It would be a good idea, probably. Whether it'd logically work, I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean, even if you don't do it physically, if you get into a routine of telling someone every time you spend... <laughs> you know, not every minute. Well, I know, but then it'd make you, it'd make you feel um, more on the spot of when you're buying something. Yeah. It's like, oh, do, do I really need to buy this? And then think you've got you've got to think ahead, haven't you? So, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Always have someone that can help you. Yeah. Um. Fight like, not by giving you money, but by oh, helping yeah. you manage your money. Yeah. To start with, and I know you've got something else leading on from that. Yes, I have a nightmare for using Apple Pay. Okay, is that because it's too easy? It's too easy. I mean, I've got Apple Pay 
on my phone. On your wrist. And on my wrist, on my watch. Because you're so techno. And... Techno. <laughs> techno. Techno. In dance. But no, I know, I know exactly what you mean. It is so, so easy. And they've changed it so you don't... It's not like contactless, so you can spend more than £30 on it. Yeah, and no limit on Apple Pay. Can so you imagine like, if someone nicks your phone, though, and you haven't got it on, like, the... Oh Thing yeah, and you've got no or or your passcode's really easy, like one, two, three, four, five, six, something zero, like that. Zero, 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 zero. Yeah. It's like you could spend like there's a there's one guy at work, one customer who uses Apple Pay every week and he spends like 150 quid just up with his wrist. Oh, and for no. me that's crazy. He's got too much money so, to waste. I, I think yeah, as we say, another another good tip is try not to use Apple Pay too much. Try and use your card because when I mean when you physically use your card or use cash, it yeah. feels like you're actually spending money. But if you're using Apple Pay, it just feels like you're beeping something. Beep beep beep. You know, and you don't you don't you don't realise how much you're spending. I mean oh, no. again, leading on from that, make sure you use internet banking. Definitely. Like every big bank has got an app on the phone now where you can watch your spending and keep track of how much you've got left because the last thing you want to do is go into your overdraft. I don't have one. See, I don't on my debit, but I mean, um, for... I thought you were going to say you have a credit card then. I was like, you're not... Uh, on no, no, no. <laughs> on, my, on my debit account, I can't go over. However, when I get a student account, most of them have an overdraft. And, you, you know, you don't... You're already going to be in, like, 50, 60 grand's worth of debt after uni. You don't want to be... Wait. You don't want to be in trouble with the banks as well, do you? Another thing that I think personally is really, really important when it comes to budgeting is your food shopping. And after after your rent and, you know, your housing and stuff like that, food is definitely going to be everyone's biggest cost. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we've done that little game uh, just, just now. Uh-huh. But, you know, it, it is important to think about what you're going to buy when you are doing your food shopping. Cereal. And planning ahead. I mean, yeah, it's like cereal's cheap. It's cheap. I mean, you could technically have it for every meal. Maybe you wouldn't be as healthy as possible. Yeah, maybe not. Well, <laughs> you'd probably get away with it, but, like, it's not very nutritionally complex. No, okay. but, you know, you, you have to be f- uh, careful when you budget for shopping. But And that's not saying that you should go out and buy home brand everything. Oh, no. But... It's being careful with what you do buy and what you don't buy. One, so you don't waste anything. Yeah. But two, so you've still got a little bit of money left over to be able to buy, like, home luxuries. Yeah. Or, like, stuff that you really like. Because it's easy And then it doesn't, break, it doesn't break your bank account either. It's easy enough, isn't it, though, when, like, you go, if you go with your parents, you'll just throw stuff in and not think about it. I mean, yeah, and, so, and some stuff is very expensive. And, you don't and realise, do you? You don't, you don't realise the price of things until you've actually got to go and shop for yourself. And talking about not knowing the price of things, another big cost for students is transport. Definitely. And I mean, I know yeah. a lot of students drive, <laughs> but especially, especially um, if you're like me going to Manchester yes. and around there, there's loads and loads of public transport, Definitely, but yeah. there's always hidden costs to it. You never know how much... Um, like the train's going to be or a bus or anything like that because the prices are always changing and they're, all, they're always stupidly high, especially when you're a student because oh, yeah. you can't benefit from all of the young person discounts anymore because you're no. only 18. So one tip that I would suggest is shop about for like travel passes or I know a lot of student unions actually partner with travel companies so you can buy a special student pass Although that it's like a standard fee, so you'd have to pay a big lump sum at the start and then have it. But you have Which to think about that? you have to think about how much you want to travel. Yeah. And especially if it's like the train and stuff, try and book ahead because if you're getting the train on the day, it's going to be like three times more expensive. It's hard to predict. Or even think about student banking. Mm. They often offer a lot of travel cards with it. So I mean, like Santander. Santander. They yeah. get you a third off train travel if you get a bank account with them. You get but, the travel, not travel card, rail card. Yeah, that's I that's think. what I mean. Yeah, it's. I think it's a third off. First of July is when you can apply for that though, because I is applied it? and there was like, please try again on the first of July. Well, I, was like, yeah. I actually tried to apply for tra- Santander and they wouldn't let me because I'm not eighteen yet. So I'm not. 
I'm not going to be able to get a student bank account with Santander. Like which I was actually annoyed about because personally, I I know we're not we're not qualified to give out banking advice, but <laughs> really for for me, they were the best. But they won't let me start one until I'm eighteen. Well, the funny thing, which is, is stupid because yeah. I'm going to go to uni and I have to enter bank details into like my housing stuff and um. You know, other stuff like that before like before well. I'm 18 to pay for stuff. It's like student finance now want to know what my bank account is, but I can't get one with Santander because I'm not 18. So I'm going to have to go with um, another bank, probably Lloyd's because I'm already with them. But I just think it's stupid. Anyway. Anyhow. Um, back to our top tips. Um, I know you, you've got another one. Student discount. Aye. Okay. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? <laughs> Just student discount. Well, I personally got uni days because it's yes, free. Yes, everyone's got uni days. Everybody. Near, near enough, if you haven't, go get it. It's it's really easy to get uni days as well. You just need an email, don't you? And that's it. Yep. And student beans. See, I've heard of that one, but I've not got it. It's, Is that I, any good? It's all right, actually, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'd, I'd recommend. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. And <laughs> I, I also take advantage of them all, to be honest. I have NUS as well. I signed up and got... You have to buy the card initially, but you can buy it for one year, two year, or three years. I've still got mine for three years. Wow, nice. No, well, what what sort out. of stuff does that get you discount on then? Um, you've got... A, well, I've got the app as well. So you've okay. got... It does, it's not like uni days. It doesn't change all the time. It's more static. Is that right? Static. Yeah. It's not as variable as student beans and uni days. Oh right, yeah. Um, and like it's like clothes shops. There's a few. I know there's like a section for actual like university. Yeah. And it's like bulk buy stuff though, but you've got to be careful with that, I guess, because you do buy too much. Well, I mean, if you, if you shop around, I'm sure there's. There's yeah. like a, there's loads of different student discount things, isn't there? And there's loads of yeah. um big companies that offer student discount for stuff. I know like Boots do it. Um, they've only just started. Well, they've only just started, but Superdrug. Superdrug. Well, I didn't know about Superdrug. You need Drug, a Superdrug card though to use it. Superdrug Boots. Um, Apple do it. You get ten percent off at Apple, which works out quite a lot. Which I'm sure will be used by a lot of uni students buying stuff like MacBooks yeah. and O2. stuff like that. Do all do I too do it? Yeah, they do. Um, you can get off discount on your airtime. Oh, nice. So. Sounds pretty cool. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Um. So yeah, <laughs> take advantage of student discounts. They're there to be taken advantage of. So do it. Domino's twenty five percent, or is it thirty five percent? Oh, that's a good deal. I will write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> Just hit me up for my code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two more quick tips before um our final one is pay your bills on time. Um, I know if you stay in halls in the first year, usually everything's included in your normal fee that you pay to stay there. I think you pay, is it three times? I think you pay for everything all in one go, don't you? Yeah. Is it like Every, each you pay, semester? Yeah, you pay per semester or... It's a bit confusing really, I don't know. Though, isn't it? Everywhere, everywhere's different, but yeah, every, everything's included on that. But like in second and third year, if you're staying in like a private house, yeah, not always is stuff paid for all together no it's a lot so of you have to work. make sure you pay stuff on time because you'll you'll start racking up debt very very quickly if you don't keep track of stuff it's not as if you're not going to have enough of that already i know <laughs> and also um link into that is make sure you pay the right taxes oh yeah because what a lot of people forget is that um if you are earning whilst you're studying if you're earning over certain amounts you'll have to pay council tax mm -hmm. to where you stay in and you'll also have to pay things like a TV license and stuff like that. Because I know for my for my uni, you get everything included apart from a TV. So if you want to stick a TV in there, you yeah. may have to pay a TV license. And although a lot of students try and get away with not paying it, if you do find you if you are found out, a fine, can't you, you can get a fine, or I believe it's a year in prison you can get for not paying your TV license as well. I'm not. Promoting. Which I mean is is a little you bit harsh, but. Yeah. Free meals, though. In terms of, well... <laughs> free meals, free Staying drinks. in prison will be cheaper free than Free Xbox. Uni, yeah. But 
Um, in terms of what you get for the TV license, I know I may be a little bit biased being um, as interested as I am in television yeah. and radio. You get a lot of content from the BBC for oh, yeah. maybe, I think it's like £16 a month, if that, per house. Don't some let you use your parents, though, when you're at uni? Don't some? If you're some. In that same region? Yes. But, or is um, that just me being I don't know, wishful. to be honest with you. Maybe you are. But, you yeah. know, there's there, there are hidden costs like that that you have to look out for. And again, you've got to budget well to prepare for that. Because yeah. you never know when you're going to get hit with a hidden charge or something. So it's always wise to have a little bit of money mm. um, kept to one side as sort of petty cash, you know, just in case stuff. You've got to prioritise as well. Yes. Because there's all these subscriptions and Netflix, Spotify, which actually are quite yeah, expensive. Yeah, and I mean, when you get to uni, especially with stuff like Netflix, it'd be cheaper to team up with your housemates and get... Chip in. A shared... A shared account so you like you can all pay to a multi-screen subscription mm. and then it works out cheaper for everyone or the like i know spotify do a family plan yeah. where you, i think it's 12 12 or 13 pounds a month and you get up to six people on it oh. um all separate accounts on premium for like 12 13 pounds a month so apple there's loads of stuff well, like that apple, apple i think do it for apple music however i don't use apple music so no. i'm not um, I'm not as good with that, but um, do you have any more tips to share with us? Get your course books second hand. That's Is a that... really good tip. I hadn't thought of that, but no, I hadn't actually until my stepmom mentioned it. All right, okay. Because she was asking, but then because you don't really know what books you're going to need until you get there. Yeah, That's and the I mean with, with some courses as well, especially like the the English courses or like business or you know the boring stuff like that you get you get massive reading lists oh yeah and I mean it's the same for a lot of subjects but you know you you have to read so many books you don't know those until you get there libra- libraries and you know they'll they'll only have a certain amount available to you. of stuff available so if people are trying to get rid of old books take advantage of that yeah because they some some books are really expensive, and especially if you get one of those professors that's written their own book, and like they Ross try and Geller. they try and plug it, you know what I mean? And then they try yeah. and sell their students their book for like twenty, thirty quid. Yeah, it is expensive, and like my stepmom mentioned it the other day. She was like, um, said that someone she knew her daughter's done psychology. Yeah. And she asked if I needed the books, but I was like, I can't say. Yeah, Probably. but I mean, I, I, think that's, I think that's a good tip. And again, sort of link into that, try and find people who've done your course, regardless anyway, yeah. for, for a little bit of experience, a little bit of an insight. Tips. But again, yeah, yeah they'll also tell you tips. And especially if you speak to people who are going or have been to the same uni as you, yeah. they'll be able to tell you where the cheapest places are where the best place is to buy stuff, where the best discounts are and all that yeah. sort of stuff. I tell you what though, when I was looking for my hauls, I did look around about what was close and then I worked out which was the cheapest supermarket. Yeah. Close well, by. I mean, that's that's what I did as well for mine because I'm actually getting transferred to a new store so I've already got a job lined up oh. which is... Very Not at Sainsbury's, is very it? handy. Yeah, and I never mentioned that I work at Sainsbury's. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's actually um, that's actually where I work. But oh, yeah, see, I, I know the there's there's one of the, there's a Sainsbury's in like walking distance from the uni, and there's also a Tesco, and I think there's an ASDA maybe five ten minutes drive away as well, and there's loads of little shops. So there's like plenty. I love Little and but, Aldi though. I know, but they they throw stuff down at you at the till at Little and Aldi. They can't yeah. get you out of the shop quick enough. Yeah, but it's so cheap. And the coffee's really nice. <laughs> I mean, you'd know the amount you drink. You get a big um, jar for, like, £1.79, and, like, you're wanting not to... You see, this this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, find people who know where the cheap stuff is. Because I wouldn't have thought of getting coffee from Lidl or Aldi. But now, now you've said that, you never know when, when it comes... To me being at uni, that's probably where I'll get my coffee from from now on. Now you've told me that it's tip. very nice as well. So you never know. In September, I'll probably listen to this back and think, ah, 
Charlotte told me to go and get some coffee. Oh, why was I friends with her? I'm going to get on a trip to buy some cheap coffee. So, do you know what? I think we've got some great tips there. We're Good team. Good should, team. We, should we go over them really quickly? Yeah. So, first of all, you said um, give your bank card to your grandma. And that was to have a little bit of an oversight and to have someone be able to tell you to stop spe- spending so much. I'm not got you. The next tip was... Keep track of your spending. Why? So you know what's going in and out of your bank. Next up, we have be smart with your food shopping. And as we said, talk to other people who already um, have been in the area, especially other students, because they'll know where the best places are to shop. Um, Another one was don't overpay for transport. Yes, as it's often very, very expensive. It's very easily done as well. It is. To overspend. It is. You said to take advantage of student discounts, which is definitely something that I will be doing. And the final one would be to pay your bills on time, but make sure you're paying the right taxes. Yes. I feel like we've got a good set of tips there. We make a good team, I'd say. I, I feel like we do. I, I, I feel a lot more prepared now. Some may say that after listening to that, they feel a little less inexperienced I see, see what, what you I did, did there, there. Hey. Hey. Clever. But, um, yeah so today we've spoken about a little bit about your past what you remember about your childhood and what you've been studying at sixth form we've <laughs> also so spoken about a little bit about psychology yeah. a lot about Sheffield as a city which I'm sure you're going to love we've done the budgeting game and we've also done some tips on saving money Aye. so in the past sort of 30, 40 minutes. We've 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 done a lot. Maybe maybe slightly more than forty. We'll see how this is after I've edited we'll see it. it. Yeah. I think we've covered we've covered a lot. I feel like we've had a very yeah. successful conversation. To say that I don't really know a lot as well. Well Do you know about <laughs> in, life? In, in terms of life. In terms right? of life. Academically I mean, you're quite smart, I've, but I've I mean not really got I, well I mean you're saying that I feel like a lot of people are the same. Sometimes the yeah. most academic people are the least well prepared for like independent are, living. You could say they are the most inexperienced. Yes. Oh, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. No one leaves the inexperienced podcast empty-handed. So, although I haven't got this thing with me now, I've ordered you a little thank you. Aww. All right. And earlier we spoke about how you want to study psychology, we and we joked about you becoming a counsellor. Oh talking, no! Talking to people, laying oh. on sofas, right? Oh. So what I've ordered for you is a little doll's house sofa <laughs> that next year you can keep on your desk, and Aww. you can you can look at that, and it it can remind you of um of your goal in life to not be the one to, on the chair for the rest of my life to not be the one on the chair so i've actually got a picture of it here <laughs> great if i can yeah it's 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 a nice flowery one it's not <laughs> it's not like your average leather boring sofa that's it's what a... sofa i've got in my house <laughs> in pool. fact that's what my brother's got <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's covered in daisies and flowers oh, and it's got a nice pretty. little bow on it so um, hopefully that arrives. It may come from China or somewhere strange, but yeah, from that's far, far. just to say thank you for joining us on the Inexperienced Podcast. Thank you for having Do, me. No problem. It's been an absolute pleasure. Do you feel a little bit less inexperienced? I can say that I do feel less inexperienced. It's it's very tricky to understand the double negative there, it isn't is it? It's very hard to understand. <laughs> but anyway, once again, thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed listening, please let me know. I love to hear feedback because I am an experienced podcaster. I want to improve. So let me know what you think. And yeah, that's the end of the episode. Um, From me and from Charlotte, thanks for listening. And goodbye. 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 The Inexperienced Podcast was recorded in June and July of 2019. Find out more information by searching for The Inexperienced Podcast on Instagram. The special guest for episode one was Charlotte Dunn and it was a Connor Gilmore production.